Hey guys, hi, how are you? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to give you a full breakdown on how much I spent on this 2003 Lexus GS300 in only the first two months of ownership. Spoiler alert, it's more, way more than the already high purchase price. Some of you had an issue with me calling my now gone Acura TSX an endless money pit, but this GS300 is in a lot better. And I acknowledge that most of the money spent on it was on unnecessary stuff, but I think that it comes with the territory of a vintage car, the inherent need to upgrade or modify the way it looks and drives. Take for instance the tires and wheels. It came with nearly brand new tires and stock wheels, but I wanted to add my personal touch, getting bigger wheels for it, but more on this later. Let's start with the purchase price. The seller wanted $8,500 and I was able to negotiate the price down to $7,500. And I must admit that I'm an easy customer because when I see a car I like, I find it really hard to lowball the owner. I had a hard time coming up with reasons on why I thought that I should pay less than his lowest counter offer. At paying the astronomical sum of $7,500, I'm now some sort of a reverse Tyler Hoover from Hovitz Garage. I didn't buy the cheapest GS300 in the United States, but it's certainly a very expensive example of a second generation GS offered by a private party. Especially when you consider that Kelly Blue Book said that I should have paid about $5,300, even considering the lower miles. And let's say in a worst case scenario where this car was in the condition that it left the showroom, I should have paid $6,500, which is $1,000 less than I paid for mine. You know, stupid's not illegal. And I also paid $915 in sales tax and documentation fees. So the total amount I paid was $8,415. OfferUp has plenty for sale at an average of $3,500, even way cheaper. Auto Trader has better examples of well cared for ones for closer than what I paid for mine or even more expensive than this one, but they're outside of California and I wasn't gonna drive out of state to buy a car. So considering there is a single owner vehicle that is in insanely good shape inside and out and that had an average of 4,500 miles per year, I believe that it wasn't that bad of a deal even at that high price but just like it has been the case for the last few old cars that i bought this one needed some tlc remember at the end of the day this is still a 20 year old car right away on the drive back from buying it the car had a vibration at highway speeds and a pump braking there see my hand i'll do it again look at my hand there <laughs> I don't know, it feels like a thousand dollar job. Turned out to be a case of warp rotors that I replaced and I also needed to balance the wheels. These two things set me back for about $450. I also paid $92 for an oil change the following week. And in the subsequent days, I noticed that the battery wasn't pulled in charge, so I replaced the battery as well for another $140. I then found a set of wheels for it and I think I got a great deal at 550. These are 18 by 8 inches Lexus wheels off a 2009 Lexus IS that are forged. I obviously had to get new tires for it for which I paid $790 and it sucks because the tires that this car came with were brand new. I paid another $120 to have them mounted and installed on my car and I'm still getting used to the look. I have an issue with the monochromatic look of my car, so now I'm thinking about powder coating them to a darker gray, maybe like a shiny gunmetal finish. The hood struts can't hold the wood, so I bought some aftermarket ones that I haven't installed for $27. And next, let's talk about the suspension. The ride wasn't the issue. It was a couch on wheels, and that's not a bad thing, but I wanted a little bit less rocking while maintaining some of the smooth Lexus feel. So I replaced the original shocks with BC Racing BR Series coilovers that sent me back almost $1,300. And after I lowered it, I went to get an alignment and to replace some bushings that I ruined at the installation, and that cost me another $450. Now it sits slightly lower, which along with the wider wheels and tires gives it a better stance, and it also drives like a more modern car. It leans less while cornering and it composite itself way quicker for a more controlled driving sensation. And believe it or not, I hadn't done the numbers before the making of this video, so let's do that right now. And I'm sure I'm gonna forget stuff, but let's give it a shot. $8,400 for the car, about $300 to go pick it up, that's $8,700. $450 for the brake job, $90 for the oil change, $140 for the battery, 
550 for the wheels, 800 for the tires, 120 for the installation, $27 for the hood struts, and $12.88 for the coilovers. I also paid $450 for the alignment. The grand total is $12,615. And as always, I want to divide this amount between the things that were absolutely needed and the stuff that I got for my GS just for personal taste. Needed were the battery, the brakes, and the oil change. The total for those things is only $680. So the rest of the stuff that I got for it are the result of my personal tasting vehicle. That's about $3,500 that I spent to make it look and drive to my taste. And that's where me and you are going to disagree. And that's okay. I love to hear well-articulated comments on why you agree or disagree with the way that I approach my ownership of all vehicles that for some of you are not worth the expense. What is next? Maintenance wise, I still have to replace the timing belt and the water pump. I mean, the prior owner told me that he replaced those things at 60,000 miles and I took his word for it. As far as modifications, I'm not done and I hope my wife is not watching this. I wanna wrap the roof. I wanna get a wrap that is like a gloss black. I haven't seen a second generation GS yet with it. And um, I think it's gonna look good. What do you guys think? I like my vehicles to look as good as they drive and to drive as good as they look. And that has a price that I'm willing to pay. At $12,600, I cannot think of too many modern cars that will give me this joy of driving. This is a vintage car that is in a garage queen, but a pristine daily driver. For what I spent on this rebatched Toyota Aristo, I'm starting to walk into Maserati territory. If I wanted a luxury batch for the sake of it, I could have gone with a Maserati, much newer actually, for about $3,000 more, even with less miles, but those things are so unreliable, they're only good to impress your neighbor or maybe the valet parking. My goal in owning this GS is to have a pristine example of a vintage Lexus that I can put an industrial amount of miles on my trips and daily drives. A reliable, simplistic, quiet, and premium automobile that can carry me for the next few years with reasonable expectations of longevity associated with Toyota and Lexus products. And keep in mind that these set expectations are based on my prior experiences with this and other premium brands. And so far, Lexus continues to come ahead of the competition and this GS shouldn't be an exception. In less than two months, I have already put almost 4,000 easy and happy miles. So watch me put another 12, 15, even 20,000 miles per year while it continues to present itself like a proper real world drive, mid-size premium sedan of yesteryears. The car isn't perfect though. The gas mileage is horrendous. I struggled to get over 22 miles per gallon on the highway. And when I combine a little bit more of city driving, I cannot break the 20 miles per gallon mark. I did know this walking into it, but it still sucks. In the next few weeks, we're going to embark in our first interstate road trip in this thing. So I'll let you know how it does on our trip from California to Texas and back in about six or seven days. It's also very slow for today's standards. I will argue that it's less agile than my Acura TSX. The power delivery is very smooth, but it has very little low end torque. So it struggles when I merge into highway traffic and the Acura was about 25% better on gas. What makes this car so slow? It's a combination of things. The auto tragic five-speed transmission, the fact that it's also very heavy, is about the same weight as, for example, a seventh generation five series, but the five series is bigger in every direction and has a more powerful engine that is also smaller. And that's just to show you how long of a way modern vehicles have come. So do not expect this GS to be a sports sedan for today's standards and trying to squeeze more power out of it only makes it burn more gas. And like I said in my first video, sure, this platform has a lot of potential, but in the stock form, it's pretty mediocre. But those complaints are for a different video. And there you have it. That's how much I spent on my 2003 Lexus GS 300 so far. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more car-related content. See you next time.